I just wanted to show you an example um, where we could use the masonry block retaining wall uh, sort of function um, not typically for a bl masonry block wall um, as you would generally probably use it for but where we could actually think outside the square a little bit and just use it for a noise wall that, that's sitting you know above above the ground fully out of the ground and um, yeah you can see that's been sort of modeled up here uh, in the perspective that you can see so I'll just sort of run through the process uh, the steps I've used to do that and with the help of this um, this macro for the retaining wall creator uh, we, we can achieve that so we'll just park that to the side so the top view here you can see um, I've just nominated a, a bit of a noise wall um, 330 meters of noise wall to be sort of adjacent to this roadway so that's the horizontal position for the wall and this is a long section of the, the existing ground along that that alignment there so what what I've started with um, obviously we need a, a super string to, to use this macro so I've got that in on, on the plan view so if I profile that it's not that that's the super alignment and I've just done that to, to demonstrate you know the labeling with the changes there but underneath I've got another uh, noise wall string which is the bottom of the wall and you can see there in the section view down here, it, it's literally just been draped onto the existing ground. So it's, all, it's just got existing levels through there. And what I've also, so if we add that model in here, so I've just paralleled sort of that string up or translated it up, made another string above it. And you can see there I've got it about, what's that, about six meters high. Um, yeah just sitting above that existing string so there's my two strings so my ground string will be the bottom of the wall and my top string is going to be the top of the wall I'll just add those strings to the section view just so we can see what's going on and here they are here the, the, the magenta dots bottom of wall top of wall all right and that's all we need um, to run this uh, function through so let's just bring that up here got that hiding down there I've pre-filled it out before so what I'm using I've, I've copied the standard definitions to my working directory and if you're not sure how to do that if you look at my previous videos I, I step through how to do that and I've created a a new wall type here called noise uh, noise wall panels and if I just show you um, how I've adjusted the values in that table it's literally just one line I've deleted all the 10 or 15 lines that you generally have where you the wall would normally increment in height and then the the base and the depth might vary but I'm just saying you know up to nine meters high the footing I want it to be you know, 700 mil wide and 500 mil deep and there's no key in this one and I've nominated the block heights to be, yeah, say half a meter height and half a meter width, and the length of the the noise wall panels I've just nominated four meters long, just to put something in there. All right, so we update that, and and that's the table we want to use there. Alrighty, so again we, we're using the, the strings option here, but again I, I, in the previous videos we, we can go through how to use the, the tins or the strings options there. So the um, the set out string there is, is going to be the top, the top of all. So the top with levels, that's this string here. That's obviously called um, top with levels and that one's called bottom with levels so the set out string is the um, top one there that I've got and obviously the, the top of the wall the top string is the top with levels and the bottom of the string is the bottom with levels now if I run that through I just um, 
put that perspective view down the bottom right just so we can see it um, sort of update as we go so if you run process through that you can see the, the wall strings there get deleted and recreated and it's created those strings for us for the for the wall now I put them on a model called noise wall and let's start with the um, the mesh for the footing and the mesh for the wall yeah so that's um, that's essentially the strings in a, in a cross section through there that you can see the footing size that I nominated um, has been um, has been modelled for me and the wall height is stepping up and achieving that sort of minimum of, of six metres high there and you can see obviously as it, as it, through, as it navigates through the sort of existing terrain it's obviously stepping up as, as needed through there or stepping down as the case might be yeah so that's um, how we can generate that sort of noise wall sort of scenario um, again but it's just sticking out of the ground alright that's it for that one so the second part of this um, sort of design I've got here is the is the piles um, underneath the noise wall um, so just want to show you how I've created that um, yeah and I haven't haven't used obviously the the masonry block retaining wall for, for, the, for these piles um, but it's quite relevant to what we're doing here so I just thought I'd show that um, so you can create all these objects under BIM and we're under tri mesh and we create and just down here we're tri mesh the BIM object um, create and edit so let's have a look at this one so we get a perspective view opening up just push that to the right and that's the panel that opens so how, how this works again we're in the setups area um, this is the comes with 12d um, everyone's got this it's it's in the library and where you can select the different objects so there's a whole a whole host of um, standard objects that 12d is created that are available to use straight away so let's just look at a couple of them um, if, you, if you haven't been in here um, so you can pick up this general fence um, and we can just select what um, yeah the, the type of object we want and just go preview and we get a little preview of what that would look like in the window here so this object's been made up of yeah all these different parts so you've got just yeah in, in a nutshell um, you've got a vertex part um, where you can position different objects at each vertex which would be the post and and the and the, the piles here and you've also got a segment sort of tab as well where you can s place objects along each segment and that would be in between the posts all those all those items there would make up what you see here yeah so that would be uh you know just one example that there's there's you can see here there's this whole, whole host of um different ones yeah safety barriers um wire rope for the road design people um yeah so you can you can position that on your project um electrical this one here is pretty good as well for um for people that are modeling underground services you can literally run that in your project sort of underground and you can make up how many conduits you have and, and the spaces between them and yeah some of the the, the big ones that I find quite impressive down here your major road um, you've got your eight lane bridge so literally they can get as sort of complex as, as this here um, so that essentially is an object um, and you could well it's, it's, it's yeah both sides 
so you could literally run that just along one single string and it will build um, this for you in your project yeah so they, they can be obviously quite simple and then quite complex um, like what you can see there so just to show you how, how I'm going to use this um, so if I come back to this one here and do a preview and just come closer so what um, what you can do here is say say for the segment I don't want any segments in in, in my my um, project so I'm just gonna sort of turn those off including that one there and if we do a preview now we essentially don't get any items created along the the segments and if we go back to vertex and say um, actually I, I only want the the, um, the footing there and preview and that will just out of all of those you know I guess when it was complete there was a, a lot of items there but you can strip them off and, and turn the ones you don't want on and you just get left with um, yeah what, what I'm after for this exercise so essentially I just just copied that to my working directory and I saved it as a, a definition um, with all the other things turned off and that's what I'm going to apply um, and then if I switch to the working directory and you can see there um, that's the one I'm going to use the segments have been turned off and I'm just using uh, that one and I've just called it piles there all right, so that's that's that one. So that's where you define your sh your, your item or your shape that you want to use, and we'll just finish off that. We'll close the preview window, and now again under BIM, try mesh create. So that's where we just were to edit or create the, the objects, and this panel here is to apply them. And this is the uh, panel that comes up. Again, it's got a parameter file option. And I've been here before, and I can just load that for the, my design noise wall. And um, I'm just going to read that. So it's read read the, the file. So you can see here, it's, it's going to be loading the object out of the working folder. And that's what I just showed you, and that's the name of it. And this is the name for the yeah the model that the the objects are going to go on to. I was going to clean them beforehand. Um, yeah, that's that's essentially it. And the last thing, or the most important thing as well, which is the last thing you need to tell it is where do you want to run this this along? What string do you want to run along? And you can see here I've I've selected this um, the the bottom of the bottom with level string which is that sort of string down there uh, that one there yeah, that's it there so if I just process that and well, I guess the last thing I'm going to show you here so you can run it at, at a certain interval as well so I've just got it every eight meters and that's the spacing so every eight meters give me a, uh, a sort of pile that's been created alrighty so if I just hit process um, it, it says it's complete and you can probably see it on the screen here as well it's created that for me um, and in plan you can see the, the little circles in plan as well and I think I picked a cross section that goes through one of the, the piles and if I just add that in the section view yeah there you can see the, the pile sitting under the noise wall uh, yeah that I created um, yeah pretty pretty cool so then if we sort of have a look underneath um, they're sitting um, just like that sort of stepping up and down as the wall the bottom of the wall stepping up and down and then you could simply say well you know that spacing's not quite correct um, you know I want it maybe every four meters instead of every eight you just literally change it to four and just hit process and now yeah we've got twice as many that have been created yeah so that's how i've generated that 
and again just to demonstrate it doesn't I've just selected a string there I could have easily selected the the center line of the road here and let's just do that because we can um, that's it there and just hit process and then obviously the they've I was cleaning the model beforehand um, over here so so they've actually been removed under the noise wall but if we just maximize this perspective view and take a look under our road um, they should be there under the road if we come down there and there they are sitting right underneath that cyan which is the the middle of the road yeah so that's that's how easy I guess it is to to position these objects and just finish it off just put it back to where it was um, which was running off that string there now I just want to pick that string again that's the one bottom of my wall and just process and now they're back again for my wall yeah so um and there it is in section and that's it for that one so yeah i just wanted to show you that that small um little presentation as well how you can combine both of these methods to, to achieve yeah a pretty good result i thought so again thanks for watching and um yeah hope to talk to you soon bye for now